Hi everyone, my name is Natalia Mitriva and I'm the Executive Director of CCHI. Uh, today I'll talk about taking the Core CHI exam, our multiple choice exam, online in the privacy of your home. We're very excited that uh, NCCA, our accrediting body, uh, allowed uh, us to deliver the multiple choice exam online at home during the COVID-19 pandemic and um, we hope you will take advantage of that. I want to walk you through the process. It is not difficult. However, uh, you need to make sure that you meet all the requirements. Um, it is uh, important that uh, you know before you schedule the exam that uh, your uh, room, your computer meet the requirements. You don't need to be a computer guru, you don't need to have too much technical knowledge, but uh, need to understand and be able to download uh, an app and then follow the on-screen instructions. If after watching this video you will uh, realize that you actually do not meet the requirement, then I strongly encourage you to schedule your appointment at a physical test center. We have test centers open in uh, many states and I know through the pandemic that we're all living uh, through right now, there will be closures and openings, so follow our uh, regular scheduling site about the physical test sites openings. But uh, today, let's talk about the online testing. Now, first of all, remember, it's only available for the core CHI exam, only for the multiple choice written exam, not for the oral exam. And you really need to consider three main factors before you uh, start. First, you need to make sure that you have a private room that is well lit, has a door that closes and is uncluttered. Um, I know for some of you that may be a disqualifying factor because you may live in a small apartment with too many people that you share and uh, so unfortunately then you'll have to test at a test center. Uh, then you need to have a computer, a desktop or a laptop with a Chrome browser installed on it and a webcam and a headset. Again, uh, it's important that uh, if you do not have a computer or a laptop, if you have a tablet or a Chromebook or a phone, you cannot take this exam. You'll have to take it at a test center. And uh, last but not least is you need to have a stable internet connection. I will explain more about it and you can read about it in the guide, uh, a PDF file uh, that explains this process, but uh, ultimately uh, it needs to be uh, a connection that's delivered to your place of testing. It could be a home, it could be somebody else's home, but uh, it can uh, has to be delivered through an internet provider. It cannot be a hotspot of your phone. That will not work. Uh, and uh, ultimately it is your responsibility before you schedule the appointment to ascertain that you meet all the requirements that I will explain in detail. Uh, if at the time of the already scheduled appointment you're not able to start the exam after our proctors will um, uh, walk through the readiness process, then you will have to pay the exam fee again and schedule it uh, at a later time, either at the physical test center or after you meet all the requirements. So this is a very important video and let's start. Um, before scheduling, read all the information that is available on our spe special webpage called Online Testing. And to find that webpage from any page on CCHI's website, which is cchicertification.org, click on the menu icon, that little circle with those uh, bars, and it will unfold into the navigation uh, bar. And that side navigation bar, the second link on it is CCHI's online testing. Uh, that's the quickest way to find this specific page. Now, uh, the first step, as you will see on that page, is that you need to read the ProProctor user guide. ProProctor is an app that is used by our testing vendor, testing company, Prometric, to uh, monitor your exam 
do at home uh, with the help of the remote proctors and the webcam and uh, uh, headset. So all the technical requirements that it needs to be Windows, how what the speed of the internet connection should be, all that is in this Pro Proctor guide. It's not long, it's just maybe 12 pages. So uh, after you read that, take a look at the room that you plan to take your exam in. Uh, you need to make sure that it meets certain criteria. And this is kind of a picture of an ideal room. Uh, I'm pretty much sure that none of our rooms are like that. So for me personally, I had to move certain things from uh, a guest bedroom to prepare it for uh, the exam because I took the demo. I acted as a student and I went through this process that I'm going to describe to you. So, uh, but ultimately uncluttered really means uncluttered. Um, now, the room requirements. First, it needs to be indoors. In other words, you cannot take it outside in a park. You have to take it in an enclosed location. It needs to be uncluttered. Uh, on the wall, there should be no posters. You can have a couple of pictures, uh, a mirror, but really not, no posters. Um, you should not, uh, you should be able to show to our remote proctor the perimeter of your room, the walls, the ceiling, the floors, and they could, should be clearly seeing all the corners. No screens are allowed inside. Um, the room should have a closed door. Uh, if, uh, I know many of us live in an open, uh, floor, uh, house, houses or apartments. So find a space which is not open. If, uh, the, uh, remote proctor sees that you have open entryways, you will not be able to test. You need to be in enclosed location with the door closed and uh, it should be free from background noise and disruptions. No screens are allowed in the room. I know how sometimes we divide the room hiding, let's say the bed behind. It's okay to have a bed in the room, but you cannot have a screen in front of it. So uh, the uh, if that is present, you need to remove it before you uh, start the exam. Uh, the testing space the and the room itself needs to be well lit, uh, and your face should be clearly visible at all times. So make sure that you're not sat, uh, sitting uh, behind, uh, that, that the light is not behind you, because then, of course, you will see your, the screen that you're looking at, but the um, proctor who is looking at you through the webcam uh, will not be able to see your face. Um, it's better to have a side lighting, which is located to the side of your screen uh, and also an overhead lighting because during the readiness check uh, and during the whole exam, uh, the proctor may ask you again to pan the room and they should be able to see the corners and without the overhead lighting, sometimes uh, it can get too dark. In that guide that I uh, took, talked about in step one, there are pictures of rooms which are acceptable and which are not acceptable. So please refer to that guide. Um, no third party is allowed in your room. So obviously that means uh, no uh, human beings, no babies, no children, no adults, and also no pets. I know we love them, but uh, for the two hours of the exam, you need to make sure that they do not enter the room and actually don't create any ruckus by meowing or barking too much uh, because, again, any extra noise uh, may cause the exam to be you know, terminated. Um, and sometimes that could be a challenge. If you know that this is a challenge, then you'd be better off testing at a physical test site and not at home. Um, your workstation, in other words, the place where you'll have your desktop computer or your laptop and the surrounding area around it must be free of any pens, pencils, paper, mobile phones, any electronic devices. You sh should not wear a watch because you have a timer on the screen. So all that needs to be removed. And that kind of took me about 10 minutes to remove all the stuff from my desk. And then uh, it's important that it is not within the reach of uh, your desk. So like, let's say I have a stand next to my desk. Well, I had to remove the stuff from that too. So it does take you uh, some time to just 
uncluttered it for the time of the exam. Um, you cannot access any of those devices. In other words, if the proctor sees that you have a phone, first of all, they'll ask you right away, do you have any phones or electronic devices which could be a second screen or it could be a tablet or another computer? All that should be removed from the room. Um, you are allowed to have a TV set in your room, uh, but uh, you need to cover it with a you know cloth covering, a scarf or um, just pillowcase for for that matter doesn't really matter what you cover it but uh so that uh, nothing could appear on that screen during that uh testing uh time but and also of course it needs to be turned off and uh, turned off um then um you're not allowed to have any reference materials uh for that reason, uh, there should be no posters on the wall because the proctors, proctors, uh, different clients, they don't really know what our exam is about. They will not allow you to start the uh, exam even if you have a chart of, let's say, history of the world, right? Because they don't know if they, we have questions about that or not. So all these uh, beautiful charts that you may have of anatomy or of history of the world, of geography, all that needs to be removed uh, uh, because um, it may be considered a reference material. Um, you should not have access to dictionaries, books, written notes, or uh, any of that uh, stuff. Uh, you may have a bookcase in your room, but it needs to be away from you, so you could not easily reach out and grab a book from it. Uh, and I understand you're not going to do it. Our exam is actually not that kind that you can look up answers in a textbook. But um, the requirements are the same uh, for uh, taking the exam at a testing center where you're in an empty room and we're trying to replicate the same environment in your home. And this is important for our accreditation status because we have to, after all this testing is done, after uh, we are moving on after the pandemic to a regular life, we'll have to report to our accrediting body, to NCCA, how we maintained uh, the same requirements at your home testing that we have at um, physical test centers. So for that reason, please remove everything. Uh, you are allowed to have two tissues, two Kleenexes during the exam. Uh, so don't take it when you are sick or have allergies, obviously, because two will be not enough. But jokes aside, uh, they need to be paper uh, tissues. You will be asked to show them to, like, in front of the camera, front and back, that there is nothing written on it, and they, you know, have to kind of shake them that nothing is hidden in those uh, two tissues. Um, that's uh, very important. Uh, then no. On our exam, no eating, drinking, smoking, or chewing gum is allowed. So uh, it's the same for the test site and the same for at-home testing. Um, if you require to uh, take any kind of medicine during the two hours, uh, you need to uh, request an accommodation before you schedule the exam so that we warn uh, that proctor that you will be allowed to have medicine and water in the room. Uh, you cannot access any unauthorized personal items and there are many of them uh, obviously uh, use your discretion but here are some examples. Uh, you should not have any outerwear jackets or uh, hood uh, you know, sweat uh, sweaters with a hood, um, hats, purses, bags, briefcases, notebooks, watches, cell phones, again, electronic devices, any wearable technology. If, for example, you know, eye watches, all that stuff. Do not have it because uh, the proctor, when you uh, they will be um, preparing you before the test, they will ask to look at your uh, wrists. Uh, they will you'll have to take your glasses off and show them the glasses. They'll uh, they'll be uh, if you if they see that on your clothing you have pockets, you'll have to show them that your pockets are empty. So for that reason, remove everything from the room and from your person. Um, during the testing, changing location, uh, turning off lighting uh, or audio on the mic, uh, muting yourself in other words, 
speaking to somebody, have somebody talking at you uh, is strictly prohibited and the exam will be terminated or the results will be invalidated. Um, also, we do not allow you to stand up, to stretch, walk around or leave the room for any break. Uh, it's the same, again, I keep repeating myself, but it's the same uh, requirement that we have at the test centers. So if you need to stand up and stretch, you will again have to submit this ADA accommodation request form to CCHI before you schedule, about 45 days before you schedule your exam. And uh, some of the accommodations could be allowed still during your at home testing, but some of the accommodations are only allowed in the test centers where the proctor uh, is physically present. So depending on what your request is, you may not be able to test at home then. Um, keep that in mind. Now, um, like a small stretch while you're still sitting at the camera, like raising your arms quickly and then lowering them or like sh uh, turning your um, head for a second, could be allowed if you speak to the proctor and if you stay within the video camera. So uh, you can say like, you know, oh, I have a crank in my neck. I'm going to turn my neck a little bit. Is that okay? And if the proctor says, yes, this is okay, then you go ahead and do it. But as soon as your face or part of your body disappears from the view of the proctor, they have full permission to stop the exam and terminate it. And then you'll have to start, uh, you know, the process from the beginning. If CCHI discovers, uh, allows it and uh, decides that this was not a violation. So just be careful and mindful. It's the same. Um, we're not asking you to do any more than what we ask every candidate to do at a test center. Uh, the third step, uh, after you took care of the room and your person is to check the requirements of your system. Uh, so first of all, as I already mentioned, you need to have a desktop or a laptop. You cannot take an exam on a Chromebook, tablet or phone. Uh, so that's um, a requirement. And I know for some it may be a limiting requirement. And if you, so if you don't have a desktop or laptop, you'll have to take it at the test site. Um, you need to have a reliable internet connection. It's wide connection is preferred. And uh, if you're using a laptop for the wide connection and the webcam on that laptop uh, during the check-in process, make sure you watch that cord so it doesn't disconnect you. Um, you need to have the Chrome browser, most recent version of it, installed. Uh, other browsers are not supported. Um, you need to have a webcam and a microphone. A microphone could be just a normal headset that we plug in for uh, any remote activities or for your phone. Um, and the webcam uh, could be the on a laptop, it could be a built-in web webcam, but you can also use an external webcam that is plugged into the laptop. Uh, also keep in mind that uh, from the moment you log in, all the actions of you are video and audio recorded uh, for security reasons uh, and to uh, also ascertain the integrity of the process. We do the same thing at the physical test centers. All our exams are video and audio recorded at the test centers as well. So it's the same uh, criteria regardless of how you take it. Now, um, system requirements. So before scheduling, again, it's important to do all of that before scheduling your exam. You need to run a system check. The link to the system check is on that same online testing web page. We also have it on the scheduling web page. Um, and uh, it takes you to a ProMetrics uh, web page that uh, has the ProProctor um, brand and ProProctor is the software that uh, helps us deliver the exam online. Now, uh, you don't need to download first because you're doing it before scheduling the exam, right? Um, you just need to run the system check. And as you can see, the first time I clicked on the link and got to that web page, I got this uh, with the 
uh, triangle with a warning sign and click to check my mic. That's a, you may have it if you have more than one mics, you know, the laptop mic, built-in mic, and a plugged-in mic. So the system, you need to che check which one you're going to use. It's always good to use the headset uh, because uh, the quality of sound is better and um, it's um, uh, usually the quality of sound is better. Now, uh, when uh, you click on click check the mic, there will be a pop-up uh, asking you which one you want, to, uh, asking you to allow the website to access the microphone. You have to allow it because without that, you won't be able to do anything. Uh, if there are two uh, microphones, there is this arrow. Uh, and you will be able to select the one that you want. Uh, so this, for example, here, the name is of my headset, not of my built-in mic. Then you make sure that you click that remember this decision because, I mean, it's okay if you don't, but uh, if you remember it on this machine, then next time you're running the check at the time of the appointment, you will need to have that pop up again. And then you click allow. And um, after that, uh, you get to the screen, which tells you uh, again to, confirm which uh, microphone you choose. Again, that's my headset microphone, and uh, you need to speak into it. And when you speak, if uh, the system is working correctly, you will see here the um, bars from this red become green depending on the volume. You kind of need to have the volume at a decent level um, so that uh, the um, Proctor could hear you. So the way it looks, when I started testing my mic work like that, you see three bars, that was pretty good. And then I click confirm selection. And when I click confirm selection, I go back, it takes me back to this screen. And I still have this mic thing going on, but don't worry about it. We already selected it, we checked it. Uh, what you need to do next is to click this green button run. That will run the system check. And as you run this system check, because we already went through all this uh, stuff with the microphone, it will um, check green, meaning everything works. But as you clearly see, when I was running the check, my webcam didn't quite check. Uh, and so I went through the same steps to make sure that my web camera is the correct web camera and it's working. So you just click on this button check and do uh, it, do what it tells you to do. Uh, and um, uh, if you don't do it during the check, then after you finish, you, uh, the system will show you that it's 100% complete, but yet there is one error, and then that uh, triangle with the warning is uh, next to the part of the system that doesn't work. So um, if your webcam doesn't work after multiple checks, you might need to buy a new webcam. Uh, which is not too bad because they're not that expensive anymore. Uh, and uh, if I used my built-in laptop webcam and it worked just fine. Um, then uh, you'll it'll be worse though if your download or upload uh, speeds will not check correctly. That means that your internet con connection is not strong enough. And unfortunately, if that's the case, then you will have to go and take an exam at a test site. That's why I'm telling you to run this check before you even schedule the appointment so you know for sure you're able to do that. Uh, after that, uh, go ahead and install the Pro Proctor app. From the same page at the top, uh, click on this, and really nothing extraordinary happens. There is a um, program with the uh, Pro Proctor dot exe extension that will ask you where you want to save it save it in your download folder or if it could automatically save to your download folder the important thing is go to that download folder or to the um, downloaded app at the bottom of the screen click open so the app runs and but when it runs nothing happens you won't get a desktop icon you won't get it to open, um, it'll be just there. And uh, it's a little weird, but, and I actually did it twice to make sure I did it, uh, but you don't need to. Once it works just fine. Uh, you can check when you look in the control panel. Uh, uh, and in that control panel, if you look for Pro Proctor app, 
you will see it listed. And if you see it listed under the programs installed on your computer, that means that you're good. Um, uh, but uh, as I said, if you may be anxious, then it's okay to click and install this twice. But the important thing is it's not just clicking here, it's clicking on that link that you downloaded to install it. Um, now, uh, you're ready, if you met all the criteria, you're ready to schedule. So there is a special link. It's a different link than the regular scheduling at the physical test site. Where can you find it? Two places. One is in that online testing page and also on the scheduling page. But on the online testing page, if you scroll to the bottom, where in the top we just, I describe all these requirements, um, you'll get to that scheduling section. And here is the link to schedule a new appointment. You click here to reschedule the appointment later on. You need to reschedule it from here uh, and to cancel, here is a link to. Now, keep in mind that we have a scheduling and rescheduling policies. Uh, there are fees uh, with rescheduling, so plan so that you don't have to reschedule because if you reschedule within 30 days um, or longer, then there is no fee. But if it's 29 days, uh, five days, then you have to pay the fees. Um, so since you're planning for taking this exam at home, uh, pick the day you want, schedule it, and then stick with it. Now, the second place where you can find the same link is if you're going to our regular scheduling link from the notice to schedule. And I want to say in the notice to schedule, the new notice that uh, we're going to start sending out now will have two links, one to the scheduling at the physical test site and another one to a scheduling online at home. So. Um, the, this is what the scheduling page for Prometric looks like for the physical test site. And if you want to schedule it there, you just need to use this link on the uh, left-hand side. But if you want to schedule it at home, keep reading the page. And at the bottom, further down, when you scroll down, you will see this link again. Schedule remotely proctored exam, or reschedule it, or cancel it. So all these links are here. And here is, again, the link to your system check that I just you know, shared with you. So if you forget about it on our website, CCHI's website, you can find it on the Prometric Scheduling website. Now, uh, on the day of the exam, I suggest that 30 minutes before the appointment time, let's say your appointment is at 10, at 9.30, you need to start preparing yourself. Now, the good thing is you can schedule 24-7 because it's at home and we have a team uh, that of proctors that is worldwide, so there is no limitation when you're taking the exam. You can take it at night because, believe me, somewhere is daytime, right? So, But 30 minutes before the appointment, you kind of need to go through these things again. So make sure you're not hungry, thirsty, and you don't need any bathroom breaks. Take care of all that before. Uh, because during the exam, it's two hours, plus you log in, etc. So plan for about two and a half hours max. Uh, you will not be able to leave the room, and you cannot have any food or drink inside. Remove all personal items in that step two that I just described, all electronics. Close the door to the room. Tell If you're sharing the house or apartment with somebody, tell them to not enter your room, not talk to you. Uh, etc. Um, make sure that you turn on the lighting in the room, that it's well lit, including the corners, because, the, you know, as I said, you'll be asked to show the corners. Um, have your photo government ID ready on next to your uh, computer. Have a handheld mirror. It's can be any reasonable size, and I'll ex size. I'll explain to you why you need the mirror, but you need to have a mirror. And uh, if you need, have two tissues, right? Uh, so that if you need to uh, blow your nose suddenly or cough. Um, your headset with a microphone and webcam need to be connected to your device. So make sure you have that in place. Uh, if you're using a laptop, by that time, it needs to be fully charged. In general, I suggest like about an hour before the exams, 
appointment, turn on your laptop, turn on your computer, because right now you know how Windows wants to update everything at any moment. Make sure that if you haven't, if some updates are pending, that all that is done before you start, because if Windows decides to restart your computer during the exam, you're losing your appointment pretty much, right? Because again, it's your responsibility to be ready and not to be disconnected. So uh, in the morning uh, or before, an hour before, turn it on so that all updates are current. And uh, I can tell you uh, what happened with me, actually exactly that. Uh, I, um, the night before, I had everything set up. Uh, then in the morning, turned on 30 minutes and I saw the windows downloading some update. Luckily, I was done before I connected to the um, uh, proctor, but it was a little bit nerve wracking for me. So I made a note for myself, start really early so that, uh, and leave it plugged in and connected to the internet so that uh, all the updates, updates are done and you can restart the computer and have everything uh, ready. Uh, now, uh, if you're using a laptop like I did, uh, it's fully charged, but before you launch the exam, disconnect the cord, have it ready because you'll need to plug it back in when you start the testing, but disconnect it because when you will pick up the laptop to show the room, uh, you will wrap yourself in a cord. So be aware of that. Um, then uh, about 15 minutes, so it'll take about 15 minutes to go through all that, right? 15 minutes before the appointment, start logging in. So go to that link, um, uh, and the same link is also available, will be, you know, on our website. It's the same one that you used for, check in, uh, for checking the system. Uh, but instead of the system check, right, you, did, you were right here, you click on the launch exam. Uh, area and you will see this screen. You need to paste from your email. Don't put it on the piece of paper because no paper is allowed. And so what will you do? You'll have to, you, or you, if you have it on the piece of paper, type it in and then take the piece of paper outside of the room, come back and close the door and then uh, click uh, launch. Um, the first, the top uh, uh, field is your confirmation ID number is 16 digits and then the second field is four letters of your last name and in my case it was uh, ZZ demo so to make sure that uh, proctors know that I'm not the actual test taker but that's where you will type your last name uh, now uh, you click launch and what will happen then is to the proof that you installed the Pro Proctor app correctly. Uh, if you did it correctly, this pop-up window will say open update. Uh, and uh, the website say wants to open this application. You need to make sure you click open update. It's really not an update. It's starting the Pro Proctor app that you already installed. And if this doesn't happen, this is the moment for you to go back and install that app again. Uh, but I mean, actually it just works very well. So you don't need, uh, you, I'm sure you won't need to do that. So uh, after you click launch, this pop-up pops up and you click open update and you start the checking in process. First, you know, on the screen, you'll have instructions that you need to send to your face and a special thing you'll be looking at the camera and it'll tell you hold still and it'll be one two three and then a picture is taken and you're asked do you like the picture if you do you click accept then you go to the next step which is hold your photo id in front of the camera now here the lighting is important because when you hold the id in front of the camera and you click a picture of it again it'll ask you if you like it or not make sure that you can read on that uh, id your name because uh, if the proctor cannot read your name, they, you know, won't they will won't uh, uh, like that ID uh, anyway. So so you can take as many pictures as you want. That's why you're starting 15 minutes before the appointment, right? So you're done taking with picture taking, uh, and then the next step will be the system check that you run and. Um, in my case, I had no surprises, nothing, everything checked in, the webcam there, but if for any reason you will get, uh, again, a same um, uh, warning uh, triangle, uh, 
let's say, mic, you thought you plugged it in correctly, uh, but it really became loose or a webcam became loose if you're using external webcam, that's how it may show it, right? That uh, something is not there. Just, you know, plug the camera again, click on that check, uh, and run the system check again. Um, if um, you may, I mean, I, I don't expect it, but if you, you can run it as many times as you want uh, until, because until the system checks, you won't be transferred to the live person. So after these uh, three steps, you're connected to a live person. It's the readiness agent uh, who will walk you through the readiness check. Uh, you will see uh, their face on uh, the screen and you'll be able to hear them in your headset and, you know, you'll just follow their instructions, have a conversation with them. Uh, first, they'll ask you for the exam name. And here the important thing is that the exam name listed with uh, Prometric is Core Certification Healthcare Interpreters. It's a full name. If you just say Core CHI, they'll say, could you give me the full name? So remember the full name of our exam. Uh, then they'll ask your name, your email address, make sure they match of who is scheduled. Um, they ask you again to share, hold your ID in front of the webcam, show the front, show the back. Um, then they will do the scan of the room, uh, the walls, the ceilings, uh, the floor under the chair. That one is maybe a little tricky, uh, especially if you're using not a detached webcam, but the built-in webcam on the laptop, as I did. When I got to the chair, uh, my internet uh, connection cord uh, got loose and I got disconnected. Don't panic if that happens count till 60 uh, just so that the system resets not so not to calm yourself down uh, and then log in again when you log in again uh, you go through the same check-in process you still have to take your picture and all that stuff but um, what Actually, no, uh, you may go through that, but you may not. It depends on, you know, how uh, the system captured you. So in my case, I actually didn't have to go through the picture taking and the ID, uh, but um, it was a demo. I don't know if you'll have to do it. Anyway, uh, then you get most likely a different agent, and it really doesn't matter. Uh, you just tell them, hey, I got disconnected, uh, my cord got unplugged, and uh, what um, they will do, they'll still have to start from the beginning because it's a new agent, and they want to make sure that nobody else came in during that break, so it's still you, so they'll ask you for, again, name, name of the exam, ID, and then the scan of the room, and uh, so, second time I was careful I just held that place where the cord plugs into the laptop and everything went fine uh, and after that with a handheld mirror remember I said have a mirror um, you need to show the um, readiness agent the screen of your laptop and the back of your laptop because so that uh, they know that there are no uh, items around it um, again to, for safety reasons uh, and then um, uh, the next step uh, would be to inspect your body uh, yourself right um, try to wear something you know light since you're at home so uh, you know you really don't need any jackets and all that stuff but they will ask you to show the wrist if right now I still had a long sleeved um, uh, top so you show the wrist that there is no watch and nothing is hidden then if you're wearing pants uh, they will ask you to lift your uh, pant leg so they can see that uh, your ankles are free of any uh, hidden devices. If uh, you wear pants or skirts or dress that have pockets, they will ask you to show that the pockets are empty and even a Kleenex is not allowed or uh, lipstick, none of that stuff is allowed. So it's the same uh, process as at the test sites. There's nothing different. We're not asking you for anything more. It's exactly the same uh, process. So after that, uh, oh, if you have eyeglasses, they'll ask you to 
take the glasses off to show that nothing is connected uh, to them. If your hair is covering the ears, they will ask you to pull it out to make sure that you not have nothing behind the ears. Uh, so, and that's again, they may ask a mirror uh, if necessary, just to turn your uh, head for that. So again, it's, we try to replicate at home remotely what we're doing at the test center. Um, please understand that it's nothing uh, personal and we truly uh, need to do that to ensure that everyone is treated fairly uh, and there is no difference between candidates who take the exam at the physical test center or at home. Then. You take the test, and that's uh, so. After that initial intake, which takes about 15, 20 minutes, then you take the test. Um, you are the readiness agent transfers you to the uh, proctor, uh, whom you won't see, because uh, what uh, happens after that step is you just see the screen with a test on it. But through the webcam, the uh, live proctor always watches you. Uh, and also in the right hand uh, top corner, you have a chat box where you can chat with that person. But you don't need to type if you don't want to, you can just talk to them. That's why you have the headset with a mic. Uh, and um, for the uh, for taking the test, you need to follow instructions on the screen. Um, if at any moment you experience any IT issues, maybe the internet connection slowed down, and let's say you click next button and nothing happens, tell this to the proctor, live proctor, and they will ascertain because on their end, since the, you installed that pro proctor app, they can. Uh, see what's happening and uh, they can also uh, maybe transfer you to tech support and then back to them. If any of that stuff happens or if let's say you suddenly lose electricity and then you are reconnected again, log back in, you uh, using, uh, when you logged out, right, what happens is, um, or disconnected, I mean, uh, what happens is you get the pop-up screen is error occurred and then there is the link to which um, email you need to uh, email and then uh, when you log back in you there is a support uh, box which you use to um, resolve any of your IT issues but uh, I'm told that this IT issues pretty much never happen so, so I don't know uh, obviously it didn't happen for me it didn't happen for uh, our uh, um, candidate manager who also took the exam at home so our experience was very smooth and we live in different cities and have different computer systems so uh, we tried to check it uh, and um, you know it seems that everything works very smoothly actually so um, if you disappear just a reminder if during the test you disappear from the camera view the exam will be terminated so uh, that is done to prevent any kind of cheating uh, from occurring. Uh, now, when the exam starts, the first part you're at is your uh, instructions section. And uh, what um, this uh, platform has is the name of the section, the first one is in the introduction, and that's where you have description of the exam. Uh, and the timer, first timer here, it gives you about 10 minutes uh, to um, uh, read these instructions. You can see there are 14 pages. It's up to you. If you've ever taken multiple choices exams, they're pretty much all the same, so you may not want to look at it. But if it's your first time, look through it. Uh, you know, they explain to you how to select the correct pay, uh, question, how to go back, how to flag a question, all that is it. It's, uh, only the first page is this long, all the other pages like a short, uh, like one paragraph pages, you can literally click through that, with that every page within about four minutes. If you, uh, you know, have taken multiple choice uh, exams before, if you have not, then you may take all 10 minutes to read it. Um, when you're ready to start, uh, after going through this tutorial, uh, it's, uh, will, uh, be the, you'll need to press this bottom button, which uh, is 
uh, start the test. Uh, and uh, this exam is one uh, two hours or so 120 minutes. So after that first section, you get to the actual uh, questions. And here the label is section one. Uh, section one is all 100 questions. It's not like section domain one or domain to know. Uh, it, it's the platform who calls section what uh, should be called the test. Um, and uh, here the timer already shows you your full two hours. And the way uh, you uh, will see the first question is here will be the text of the question. Uh, and here are four options for answers. When you decide which option is the correct, you click on this and it will become, instead of grayish, it will become orangish color. That means that you selected option B for that question. And then you can click at the bottom, there is the button next, or you can click here on the side two, three, you can go in the order there is, uh, you know, displayed, or you can go randomly. I suggest go in the order uh, and then uh, if you have a, um, at the end of the exam you can go back and review all these questions and change the answers if you still have the time left. Um, so um, the, this uh, important part of the um, top of the screen is where your timer is, right? So uh, the time is two hours. So when you have the five minutes left, there will be actually a pop-up telling you five minutes left, uh, but you can always see that timer here. You also, here is the progress bar. 100% means you answered all 100 questions. Uh, if you answered few questions, then you will have, you know, 98, 99, that kind of stuff. Now, finish section, because remember how I said section one is the whole exam. Finish section means finishing the whole exam. Um, and uh, you only want to press it when the progress bar is 100 and you answered all 100 questions. Because after the exam itself, there is another section which is a survey of your experience. And that's the important part to uh, keep in mind that uh, by if you think finishing section means finishing some portion of the exam, no, it will be the whole exam. Uh, so what will happen if you click that button will be this pop up. If you select finish sections, your answers will be submitted and you will not be able to return to the section, meaning you will not be able to return to this exam. So again, check that the progress bar shows 100%. Uh, another visual check will be like, as you can see here on the right hand side, all the questions, sorry, left hand side, all the questions instead of being green became black. That means you answered them. So that's your visual cue. Uh, and so if you're ready, then you click finish section, which means finish the exam, and you get to the survey because then it's section S. And section S has just four questions, which pretty much just ask about your experience. Uh, and that part is five minutes uh, because we only ask you a very simple question. And after that, you uh, click finish test. Uh, and survey is optional. You don't have to fill it out, but we always hope that people will so that we know how to improve. So finish test. When you click that, you submit the exam, but there is another pop-up saying, do you really want to finish? You click finish. All these pop-ups are meant in, you know, intentionally so that somebody accidentally don't exit the exam. So you really have to click three times before you exit the exam. And uh, so there's no, uh, oh, I made it by mistake. No, when you click finish three times, that obviously means that you did it uh, on purpose. After you, because it's a multiple choice exam, the good thing you will see the result. You won't see the score right away. You will see pass or fail. And here you see I show fail because, you know, I didn't take the full exam when I did my demo. I just did, uh, you know, several questions and obviously I failed um, because I didn't answer all 100 questions. And uh, this way you will know. And uh, now after that, uh, you'll click um, exit test. 
and uh, your experience will be completed. Uh, and then you turn off the computer and uh, have uh, uh, a celebratory uh, meal or uh, just relax and uh, congratulate yourself that you did it. Um, as far as the score report with the actual score, uh, you will get it within uh, 48 to 72 hours via email to the same email that is in your CCHI profile. And then uh, within um, a week, you will get an email from apply at CCHI. The first email, the score report comes from Prometric and the second email comes from CCHI, which again confirms your official score. Uh, and uh, if you are a core CHI candidate, you will then get a certificate. If you're a CHI candidate, uh, you'll go into the next step. Uh, with that, I wish you happy testing. I wish you to uh, stay healthy and take this time as an opportunity to uh, improve uh, your knowledge of the interpreting profession and to get certified. That's the best way to distract yourself from many uh, hardships that we're all experiencing. So thank you very much.